Hello everyone, it's Carrie from sunshineinmypocket.com. Today I have a really fun project using this stamp set called Magnolia Sympathy from Missing Stamps. Today I'm going to be coloring these up and building a beautiful cherry blossom, kind of like a bouquet. So even though this is a magnolia flower, it reminds me of cherry blossoms and so that's what we're going to do today. So I'm just kind of laying it out on my cardstock to just get a general idea of how I want to build this up. I'm using that branch that already has a couple of the flowers on and now I'm just going to build it up by adding some additional flowers and some additional leaves. I'm going to stamp those on and then I'm just going to keep on building. This set is so beautiful and it's really easy to build up a bouquet of whatever you want it to look like. Today it's going to be a branch with kind of like some of the leaves and flowers falling off of it. I'm kind of reminded of spring by this one. I put down an, a piece of acrylic here so that I can go ahead and stamp some additional flowers without getting any ink where I don't want it. So I just kind of place those and then I can stamp those up. And then I'll also stamp some extra flowers on an additional sheet of cardstock so I can color them and place them over the top, like especially this one down here where I stamped over that branch a little bit. I am really not worried about doing any masking whatsoever because I am going to add some on top. So that's going to really create a beautiful dimensional look. I'm using this diagonal stripe stencil for missing stamps and I already have sprayed some pixie spray on this. It's a really, really light tack though because I've used this once before. So I'm kind of holding it a little with my fingers, but mostly it's sticking down in the places that are important, I guess. I've got a couple beautiful ink colors from Catherine Puller, Tranquil and Cove Blue. I'm going to start with the lightest color and just go around this branch, trying to avoid most of the flowers. And then I'm going to go in with Cove Blue just to make it a little darker around the edges. That's really going to add some interest. That's all the color I'm going to add. And now it's time to stamp those additional flowers and color them all up with Copics. So I am using my Copic markers for this project. I'm going to start coloring that branch up with a really dark brown, an E79. And this is a really thin branch, so I didn't worry about adding multiple colors, just wanted it to be brown. And there's a little spot right there to get. And now I'm going to start adding some pinks. This is what reminded me of the cherry blossoms when I started adding the pinks. So I'm going to use the darkest RV14 here on the smallest little blossoms and then I'll use a couple different colors on the rest of them. And I'm just going to show you one of the flowers that I'm coloring up. I'm adding in a few darker lines where the petal might be bending just a little bit just to give it some more interest. But I'm doing this pretty quickly to make it a nice easy coloring. If you are one that doesn't enjoy coloring or wants a really simple way to color up these flowers. I do have another video where I colored them with inks and I just did some ink blending. So I will link that as well if I remember to do that here. You can see that I've just got these three shades of pink. I'm gonna color up these flowers, some of them darker, some of them a little lighter to give a variation in the look of this card. And there's another one I colored that was the extra one that I'm gonna use for over the top. For the leaves, I'm using some yellow greens. I'm using YG93, YG95, and YG97 to get some good color on those leaves. And again, it's a very simple process, just adding some of the dark to the center and blending that out with the mid-tone and then the lightest one. And that's just a really easy way to color leaves. There are a lot of different ways you could do this, but today we're going for easy. So here's a look at all of the flowers that I have. And for the background, I'm using the Heirloom Blooms stencil, which is a favorite of mine. And I'm just adding a little bit of grit paste. I'm using the white one here. You could use any paste you have, really. But I thought this made it look a little like the pollen was coming off. 
I mean, this is, after all, a spring card. And if you can't tell by my voice, I have some spring allergies already going on here. So this definitely reminded me a lot more of that with all that pollen around those flowers. <laughs> but I love the look of adding some mixed media additional elements to the card. So before I add the sentiment, I'm just going to start adding the flowers. I have colored the centers of most of these with a nice yellow Copic marker and popped them up with some foam tape so that they can be dimensional as well. This adds a lot of interest to your card. I am going to put uh, one kind of overlapping this one here because you can see I did get a little ink over that lighter pink flower. So that is the reason for some of the placement on these and a beautiful reason for why you can build your cards up this way. It's almost like sequins. You can cover up any issues, right? But I do love the look of adding things popped up and here's some extra blooms that are falling right off this branch. Spring has sprung. So pretty. I have chosen that sentiment from Sunshine and Rainbows, as I mentioned. And this one says, hello, sunshine. So after I finish adding all of these additional elements, I'm going to go ahead and stamp that on using some black ink. And I'm going to be using the same black ink I used for Copic coloring. This is my favorite black ink right now. It's the Eclipse Black Remarkable ink from Maker Forte. It's really great for Copa coloring and also for stamping sentiments. Nice dark ink. So there's our panel. I'm just going to add it to our card base that's 110 pounds. And then I'll just finish adding a few finishing details, adding a little more yellow to the centers so they pop really well. And then I'm going to add some gel pen detail just using some dots on different areas of these flowers. Now I know you can't tell here, you'll be able to see it a little better. There we go, where I add those dots in just a couple of areas, not all the petals, just a few areas where I thought there would be some nice highlights on those flowers. And look at that, a beautiful spring cherry blossom bouquet here with some of them kind of falling off and scattering around with the pollen. <laughs> I have to say I do love that striped background with these flowers so beautiful and Miss Ink makes it so easy to build up cards like this and make some beautiful projects I hope you did enjoy this video if you did give it a thumbs up it really helps me out with YouTube don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well because we'll be back with more inspiration really soon some additional cards and paper making surprises Thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.